Hello and welcome to another Beast PC video. Almost 10 years ago, back in 2011, Intel released their Sandy Bridge lineup of CPUs. They mark what I consider to be the start of the modern era of consumer CPUs, ones that support all of the latest games and run an architecture that's not very different from modern Intel CPUs. They've remained popular ever since release, yet prices are falling and falling even still 9 years later. You can now get quad-core unlocked i5s for $30 and i7s for $60, but should you? In order to make use of these chips, you will need to have a beast overclock on them due to their lower IPC. Luckily, Sandy Bridge CPUs are some of the best overclockers out there. 100% of them are able to hit 5.0 GHz at safe voltages with enough cooling. The safe maximum voltage for daily use is all the way up to 1.48 volts or so, so don't worry about destroying the chip. In fact, for our 2500K, we reached 5 GHz with only 1.45 volts. To compare with something from the modern day, we're using an Intel Core i5-9600K, its spiritual successor from 8 years later. It features 2 more cores and 2 more threads, and it's 14 nanometer plus 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 plus, so it overclocks just as easily. We hit 5.0 GHz at less than 1.35 volts and it was stable. To test game performance, we're using an AMD R9 Fury. Not the most powerful GPU out there, but this is the best we had, and it should be enough to expose a difference between the two CPUs. We'll also use mid-tier performance RAM for each of them, DDR3 1600CL9 on the 2500K, and DDR4 3200C16 on the 9600K, exactly a 100% increase. Let's start the benchmarks with Cinebench R15. The 2500K pushed 676 multi-core, while the 9600K with its 50% more cores and threads pushed 1264, almost double. Single thread is where it gets really interesting. In 8 years at the same clock speed, performance went from 176 to 219. Just 25% IPC gain in 8 years. Rather disappointing, Intel. Let's head into the game benchmarks with GTA 5. With 1080p high settings, the 2500K was able to push about 120 FPS. Meanwhile, the 9600K system gave 136. GTA 5 is moderately demanding on the CPU, but these two handled it well. However, the gap between the two pulled apart much farther in intense physics scenes. The 2500K starts to suffer and dips down almost 50% to 65 FPS, while the 9600K system is affected slightly less and gives 84 FPS average. Here, the difference is about 30%, quite noticeable. In GTA 4, the story continues. The 9600K is able to give just less than 100 FPS average, while the 2500K does around 78. GTA 4 is one of those games that depends on raw CPU single core speeds more, so the difference of about 29% seems in line. To really emphasize the progress of the i5s, we tested CSGO. At 1080p high settings, the benchmark ran at about 190 FPS average on the 2500K. The 9th gen CPU did 290. CSGO depends super heavily on CPU IPC and frequency, and I'm assuming here memory bandwidth as well. So the difference is drastic, over 50%. Finally, we tested a game that's optimized for lots of cores. Shadow of the Tomb Raider in DirectX 12 mode on the Sandy Bridge CPU benchmarked at 102 FPS average, while the Coffee Lake counterpart could pull off 138. This 
difference of about 35% or so, I'll attribute to having 50% more cores and about 25% more performance on a single core. So after 8 years, you can see that the 2500K is finally starting to show its age. Its IPC is unfortunately slightly lower than Intel's modern CPUs, and while it can make up for it somewhat with its eagerness to overclock, Intel's 14 nanometer plus 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 is also quite good at overclocking, so the difference remains quite large between them. Some interesting things we noticed. The CPU power draw between the two seems to be around the same when playing games. However, take this with a grain of salt as motherboards often don't measure it correctly. Still, it's pretty cool to see how much improvement has been made with similar power consumption. If seeing this video has made you want to go out and buy a 2500K, I would say you're not thinking the wrong way. However, you'll still need to buy a motherboard to do an overclock and a high-end cooler to hit higher frequencies, and at that point I'd really recommend Intel's 4th gen instead. Although the CPUs are more expensive and slightly worse at hitting higher frequencies, the IPC and the memory controller are much improved. The motherboards are much more reliable, more plentiful, and often cheaper. So, is it the end of the era for the i5? Of course not. You can see it's still hanging in there in the more CPU demanding games, always happily giving over 60 FPS. It's only $30, and you probably won't be pairing it with a high end GPU, anyways, and with a low end GPU, it makes for an excellent budget gaming system. I hope to see Intel do better with CPU design in the future. The difference between the two is great, but over 8 years it could be a lot greater. Intel's 10th gen is a big jump from 9th gen in terms of thread count, and we hope to see similar big improvements in the future. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. See you next time.